Hi, BZ students, Ms. Citrin here. I want to share a favorite picture book of mine with you, and it is called Make Way for Ducklings, and um, it's by Robert McCloskey, and this is a book that your parents might have heard when they were your age, and their parents, your grandparents, might have heard when they were your age as too. The book was published in 1941, and I remember uh, it being read to me when I was young. And you'll notice it has a medal on it. It won the Caldecott Award, which is like the Academy Awards for picture books, in 1941. It is a great, great book. And it's the story of Mr. and Mrs. Mallard, two ducks who are looking for a home for their ducklings. They haven't laid their eggs yet. They've got to find a place for the nest, and they've got to find a good place for the family to live. And they are in Boston, and Mrs. Mallard has very high standards and just hasn't found the right place yet. And this is the story of the ducklings and where they live. And Make Way for Ducklings is really based upon a true event that happened in Boston. Okay, you're in for some fun. Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. He wrote the words and drew the pictures. All right. And now all the pictures are in black and white, but they are beautiful drawings. And I hope if you have a copy at your house, you can get it out and look at it later. Or um, maybe it's a book for you to look get from the library when we're able to go out of our homes. All right. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on. Now, ask yourself, why would Mrs. Mallard not want to raise her family where there were foxes and turtles? Why do you think? When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night, quacked Mr. Mallard, so they down they flapped. Now, the public garden is a real place in Boston. It's a beautiful park in the center of Boston, and it has um, a beautiful bridge. This is the real bridge, and it's still there. If you go to Boston, you can see it, and it has some other interesting things. You're going to see them soon. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of a pond, but they didn't find much. What do you think Mr. and Mrs. Mallard are looking for uh, to eat? Okay, here's the really fun part, and this still exists in Boston. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite, and the big bird was too proud to answer. But the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the Mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast better than the first. All right, this is called a swan boat, and they go uh, all around the lagoon in the Boston um, Public Gardens, and they're still there today. So if you ever go to Boston in the warm weather, take a ride on a swan boat. Now they said that the swan was too proud to answer them because swans are very beautiful, elegant, elegant birds. But is that a real swan? I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles, and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted. But at last, Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But the page stops here. But what could be the problem? So let's look closely at the picture. I want to get it in the screen just right for you. There are Mr. and Mrs. Mallard right here. And here's some boys riding their bikes, and this one is going very, very quickly. All of a dither, 
you'll get run over. And when she got her breath, she added, this is no place for babies with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look somewhere else. Okay, now you'll notice that the bicycles look old fashioned and the clothing looks old fashioned. That's because this book was written and drawn in 1941, so things have changed. So they flew over Beacon Hill and round the State House, and there was no place there. Now, this is one of the most famous pictures in all of children's books because the picture is drawn from the point of view of what the birds, what Mr. and Mrs. Mallard are seeing. So we get what is called a bird's eye view from way up top looking down. It is a wonderful picture. They looked in Lewisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Now they're, they're touring all of Boston at this point. They flew over the Charles River. This is better quack, Mrs. Mr. Mallard. That island looks like a nice quiet place and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks just like the right place to hatch ducklings. And here is a little island, a real place in the Charles River. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And not and only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. Now molt means that their their feathers are falling off. Because they've been they will in time they'll get new ones. All their old wing feathers started to drop out, and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. But there is Mr. Mrs. Mallard on, on her nest. And here is Mr. Mallard. But of course they could swim. And one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank. And there they met a policeman named Michael. And Michael fed them peanuts. And after that, the Ma Mallards called on Michael every day. And he was a very friendly policeman. And Michael is based on a real person. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs and keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. And there is Mrs. Mallard taking good, good care of her eight eggs in the nest. One day the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, then Lack, then Mac, and Knack, and Whack, and Pack, and Quack, and Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very, very busy. Now, these eight ducklings have some very unusual names, and they all end in Ack. Now, what if they had nine ducklings or ten ducklings? What other names could you think of that end in Ack? Maybe Yak or Back. You try. Think of some names. One day, Mr. Maller decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children and she did. She is a very good mother duck. She taught them how to swim and dive, all things that ducks need to learn. She taught them to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. And here they are following Mrs. Mallard all in a line. That way they don't get lost. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, Come along, children, follow me. And before you can weaken eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack fell into line, just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water, and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. Well, where do you think they're going? There they waded ashore and waddled along till they came to the highway. Here they all are, all eight of the ducklings following Mrs. Mallard, and there is the street. <gasps> what might happen to our ducklings? 
Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 went Jack, cack, lack, mack, knack, whack, pack, and quack, just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking, and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. Oh, this looks dangerous. What might happen here to these poor little ducklings and Mrs. Mallard? They made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. Oh, there's Michael, the policeman. He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic, and then beckoned with the other, the way policemen do, for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. And there is Mrs. Mallard. The cars are stopped. Michael's put his hand up and said, stop. And all eight little ducklings are following behind. What a nice policeman. But he's not done. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. This is in the days before um, policemen had um, cell phones, certainly, but uh, walkie-talkies so they could communicate with other policemen to get help. In those days, they had police booths with telephones in them. That was the only way they could uh, call for help. He called Casey at headquarters and said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. And Clancy said, family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael, send a police car quick. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned into Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Quack, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. And there's everybody looking, because who? how often do you see a family of ducklings walking down the street? Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, well, now ain't that nice. And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud, she tipped up her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. She was a very proud mama. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. And here they are, and everybody is watching. And they marched across the street, and where do you think they're going? Right into the public garden. There you go. And these gates are still there. And the public garden looks very much like today, like it did over 60 years ago. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. And the policeman smiled and waved goodbye. And when they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. So the family is reunited. Do you think the public garden will be a good place for the duck uh, family to live? The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. And all day long, they follow the swan boats and eat peanuts. And here are the swan, here's a swan boat going around the lagoon. And there is the Mallard family. They're, they're small in this picture because we're seeing it from far away and up high. And you get a, a view of the park. And these things are still there. This bridge is still there. So when you go to Boston, check it out. And when the night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. What a nice, nice place to be. And what a lovely, lovely story. Now, <clears throat> I just wanted to um, point out one more thing, and that is a fancy word, automatopoeia, 
which means that words sound like their name. So the, the word honk, we heard the uh, car horns going honk, honk, honk. Well, the sound, sound, the word honk sounds like a car horn. And quack, quack, quack is also automatopoeia because that does sound like the sound of ducks. Another good automatopoeia word would be buzz, 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 buzz. buzz. Well, what, what creature makes that sound? Well, bees, of course. And here's another one. Plop. Sounds, it, it, the sound of something plopping down sounds just like the word. So see if you can think of some words that sound like what they mean. Well, that's Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye for now.